In this video I want to do an example of radioactive decay or exponential decay with carbon-14. Uh, carbon-14 is a radioactive element that scientists can use to date organic matter from centuries ago. So the reason we can do that is because we know that the half-life of carbon-14 is approximately 5,750 years. Okay, so that's important. Now, in this example, what we're looking at is, uh, since we're looking at carbon-14, we know it's exponential decay, and we know the model for this looks like, um, could be written lots of ways, and I've introduced this model in a different video, so I'm assuming you already have some experience with this exponential decay model f of t equals f sub 0 times e to the kt. Okay. Now, um, in this particular problem, if we look at a graph of it, it might look something like this. We want to measure the amount of carbon-14 in this mummy. Okay, And uh, at time, at certain time intervals, and we'll measure time in years here. So, uh, for example, we want to measure the amount of carbon-14 3,600 years after it was found. And we also want to know at its half-life, 5,750 years, something to do with the amount of carbon-14. Now, what's missing here is this F sub 0, the initial amount, is not given, okay? But, in this problem, it is asking for what percentage of the carbon-14 is lost. So, that tells us it doesn't matter what initial amount we use, we're just interested in how much, what the percentage that it's going to lose. So, choose any initial amount. Uh, lots of times when I, I choose, I like to choose uh, 100. It's a nice, simple number to work with. I can think of it as being 100%. So that's, I'm going to choose 100 units, grams, milligrams, percent, whatever, 100 units of carbon-14 at this time zero, which is in fact 3,600 years ago. Okay, so then that's how much carbon-14 there is at time zero. And I chose that because I'm not, it, the problem doesn't actually mention any masses to use, okay? Um, but if I know that, then I know, because 5750 is its half-life, I know that 5,750 years later, there will be 50 units of that starting amount of carbon-14. It will cut in half after 5,750 years. So a graph of this decay looks something like this. It's curving upward, but going downward towards the x-axis. Okay. And so, what we want to know is, after that 3,600 years, what percentage of carbon-14 has been lost? So we're more interested in the number that's right here, okay? We're more interested in that number, the amount of carbon-14 there. Now, let's say uh, we can tell this number is going to be higher than 50. So let's say it's 60, okay? Then how much carbon-14 would it have lost? What percentage? Well, if it started with 100 units and it drops down to 60 units, that would be a 40% loss. So that's kind of what we're looking for here. Okay. Now, how do we get started? We do not know the K value in this problem. If you want to use this model, we need our constant K. We already have our F sub 0, so we need our K value. So let's go about finding the rate of decay. So, if I want to know k, then I have to know all the other values. So I need a value for f sub 0. We already established we'll use 100. I need a value for time. Now, the only time that I have here where I know its y value is at the half-life. So I'm going to use a time of 5,750 because 
I know for that particular time, I know f of t, its y value, happens to be 50. Okay? So I'm choosing that because I have both of those values. And now I have everything but k. So I'm going to plug those values into the model. So f of t, I'm using the model that I listed up here. f of t is 50 equals f sub 0, 100, times e to the k, we don't know k, times t, which is 5,750. And now we can solve this for k. We start by dividing both sides by 100. So 50 divided by 100 is exactly 0.5. So I'll write it like that. You could leave it as 50 over 100. You could write it as the fraction 1 half. Just don't round it. It's not a good idea to round it. On the right side, we have e to the k times 5750 is more commonly written as 5750 times k, like that. And then I need to take the natural log of both sides to get rid of e. So the natural log of 0.5 equals the natural log of e to the 5750k. And that's going to cancel my e on the right. So now I've got the natural log of 0.5 equals 5750 times k. And finally, I'll divide both sides by 5750 to figure out my k value. Okay. So if you want, you could use this as your k value, or you could round it. I'm going to round it just for simplicity. Now, it's, it's not the greatest practice to do that, okay? But I found um, I usually teach this in a college algebra class. Um, it, it can be confusing for college algebra students if I don't actually get a number here. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and round this number with my calculator. And we see that k is approximately negative 0 0.000120. Okay, I'm gonna. I usually go for like four digits after my last zero. All right, so at least I'm not cutting off too much of the number. So that is our rate of decay per year. That's our rate of decay per year. And I know it's per year because our time measurement here is in years. Now I have my k value. Now the goal is to find f of t whenever t is 3600, okay? Determine f of t, which would be the amount of carbon-14, when t equals 3600. So now our model looks like this. f of t equals f sub 0, which is a fixed number, 100 times e to the k, we know our k value now, negative 0 0.0001205 t. Okay? So now, I know that t is 3600, and I can plug that in, and that's going to give me f of t, which will be the amount of carbon-14 that's currently in the mummy, 3600 years after it died. Okay? So let's plug that in. So f of t equals 100 times e to the negative 0 0.000125 times 3600. And again, this is a calculator exercise. We'll plug that in. And it looks like I got approximately 64.8. OK? So now, what that means is when our time is 3600, this value here is 64. 8, okay? So in 3,600 years, the amount of carbon-14 dropped from 100 to 64.8. So let's write that out. So in 3,600 years, the amount of carbon-14 dropped from 100 to 64.8 units, whatever that may be. So that, and I can do this because I started with 100, so we can think of these in percentages. So what percent of, percentage of a drop is that? So that is a 35.2% drop in carbon-14. And that answer is reasonable because it takes 5,750 years for 50% of the carbon-14 to decay. All right? 
So in this particular problem, we saw a couple different things. There's not much information given other than the half-life of carbon-14. We were able to use that to first determine our K value, our rate of decay, all right? And we did that by plugging in some um, arbitrary initial mass, which we chose to be 100 units, because in this problem we were dealing with percentages, so it's nice to start with 100%. And once we got a rate of decay, then we plugged in the T value that we wanted to determine the amount of carbon-14 with the K value that we found and with the arbitrary 100 initial value to determine the amount of carbon-14 at that moment in time. Finally, we could determine what percentage of a drop we had over that time period.